LaVishka was signed as kind of this back end, here's a vet minimum deal by the Seattle Seahawks. And many were thinking, okay, well, first it's Dwayne Eskridge or, or LaVishka. It's going to be a kind of a fight between these two guys to see who uh, is going to be the one that's going to make it out. Uh, but I think as time has gone on here, there's a little bit of reason to think and maybe believe that there is uh, uh, maybe a little bit more that they're hoping to get from LaVishka, specifically over on that offensive side of the ball and specifically his yak ability which he does, of course, bring to the table. When you look at him as far as a returner goes, and I'm presenting his re career returning stats above you, I know many of you go, well, he didn't just play with Carolina. He had played with Jacksonville as well. But Jacksonville didn't use him as a kick returner at that time. So he's really fairly new to trying to do the kick return thing. He has only nine career kick return attempts in his career. So uh, he's not done it a lot now. He's done it pretty well. 37 is the long, but if you look, I already did the math for you. If you look at last year and the sixth attempts and the 130, 167 yards uh, returned back, that comes out to about uh, almost 28 yards average or so, right in that territory. Uh, that would put him uh, about second or so, by the way, in the NFL as far as his rank. If you want to say that he probably doesn't have the minimum to, you know, you, you have to have a certain staff count minimum. But what's interesting about this is that with his 28 yard attempt, and then what you get with um, Eskridge last year, who I don't know, just kind of quietly led the kick return game. This, is, I, this was another one that sort of caught me off guard was Eskridge, even though he only had four attempts and he had that one big one that he had, which of course bumped it up. But uh, Eskridge leading the way last year with that number one um, returning and the, the time he does it. And maybe they're just going to kind of put him into that role as much as anything here. I It just got me to thinking a bit that Maybe there's a little bit more here as far as what they're looking to do with him, looking a little bit at his history again, and he's actually had his share of carries through his year, his career. I can't, why can't I say that today? Uh, 50 carries in his career, 252 yards, a five-yard average. Really could look to be able to use this guy as both a bubble screen guy and a fly sweep guy. When this guy goes in motion, you're going to force that linebacker to keep his eyes on that on that moving receiver and then move that extra step. That's the point of the fly sweep. And you know when the fly sweep is working or when it's not working as far as what it's supposed to be doing pre-snap based on one thing. Walk in on the mic, get your eyes sighted right in on that mic linebacker. And if you don't see that mic linebacker take it, just even an extra little step to the side. You know, a little extra step, a little extra lean to the side, taking him away from the hole where the running back wants to go. That's means it's not working really well. And if you go back and watch the film last year, for instance, let's take a situation like Tyler Lockett going in motion. Those linebackers would watch Tyler. He'd go through the motion. And then the linebackers would go, okay, uh, I'm not moving. You're not giving it to Tyler. Because, of course, Seattle just wasn't really committed to running the fly sweep. That's why when they did run it, of course, it actually had a lot of success last year. They just didn't want to go back to it. But this might be something that I think Grubb is going to lean into a little bit more than what we saw from the prior regime. And this may be more of a part of his game that you know they're going to look to build upon. He also had a tremendous amount of yak initially with the Jacksonville Jaguars when he first was starting out there, and they were trying to kind of more accommodate him in as a pass catcher. But he is a guy that just is a guy you got to get the ball in his hands. He's not a receiver, and um, I, I had meant to try to get a little bit of my old um, draft evaluation out on him because I think it would be pretty accurate to what we've seen from him as a player. He was going to be a guy that could be a weapon but not a guy that you were going to lean on. And so many teams at that time were trying to look at him as this guy that they could lean on to become a sort of number one, number two wide receiver at worst kind of situation. And there just wasn't the route running and the natural hands that he really was possessing coming out of Colorado that led you to believe that he was really going to be able to do that. But the bubble screens, the fly sweeps, that just throw him the ball in a little drag route and let him go work in space, throw him out into the flat. I'm sure many of you have seen the, there, there's a highlight film and just toss him out into that flat, letting him work out there. Uh, I, I think there's a very, there's a nice little opening here with this Hawks team right now as it stands for having another yak guy built in here who can kind of do this. And the one other thing that I think may not be a reason, I mean, outside of Eskridge not making the roster, certainly if he doesn't, then they'll lean on this guy. And, and with the kick return game now, remember, you need two guys back there. So I think you're very likely to have one or two of these guys both on the back side. This is John maybe thinking this new kick return rule is going to open up a lot of advantages if, uh, if we can kind of take advantage of it. And now you have, technically speaking, the top two by kick return average, top two kick returners from last year to accommodate to this new kick return game, whatever that will bring. 
I know it's a small sample size, incredibly small, but it makes sense with Eskridge. It makes sense with him why he would be good with it. He's a tackle breaker. He's a guy that's it's more about being hard to bring down in the open field. He's only like a, a four six one ish kind of forty guy. He wasn't your four three seven. You know, he wasn't Eskridge. You know, just a bundle of twitch. That's not exactly who he is. He's more of a guy that can have great contact balance. Uh, he's got a little extra weight at two twenty, so he's carrying a little bit of that. You know, extra. I can have the collision, keep my feet, and keep going. He's got some open field shake to him. And then you got Eskridge on the other side with his instant acceleration. So you're not going to get the kick returners a place where I'm sure in a lot of these teams, they only have like one really good kick returner. So what you'll see these kick kickoff uh, specialists do is uh, they'll just send it to the returner who's not very good at it. That's what I would do. And uh, that would be a way to maybe mitigate, even if you have a team with a real dangerous returner in order to get that done. But uh, it's one of the real interesting rule changes I'm looking at this upcoming year. But Bottom line, Lavishka is going to be used, I think, in a couple of different ways. I'm not saying that they're looking to to finally untap the potential everybody thought he was going to be when he was originally a second-round pick. But there is something here in this player that you can utilize, and it's akin, I think, to the situation with Cordero Patterson. Patterson came out of Tennessee running a 4-3-7, and everybody was looking at him as an upside guy to become eventually number one wide receiver. Everyone was kind of trying to talk themselves into that rather than just looking at what he was, which was still a very dynamic player, but he was never going to be the route runner. He was never going to develop the pure hands. You don't just kind of start to develop that stuff up at the pro level. You got to kind of bring that in the door with the rest of your luggage. And that he didn't have it was not necessarily a death knell then to Patterson's career because then he found a way to get a role carved out for him where he went, especially that Atlanta Falcon offense, and they said, you know, the hell with making your receiver. We're going to just turn you into running back. We're going to just get the ball in your hands. And uh, he was able to have a couple of dynamic seasons out there with Atlanta, um, really, really be productive in what he was able to do with them. And uh, maybe he will be able to do the same here this upcoming season with our Seattle Seahawks.